Hey yo, what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and to more of the latest in pro wrestling. Coming up, we're discussing the latest reports of WWE worsening their policies and now taking over wrestlers Twitch account and more third party applications. Superstar is said to be furious about the current situation. Latest backstage news regarding a specific role segment that was cancelled this week. The latest update regarding the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view and it seems like Vince McMahon and Triple H are related relationship is a bit complicated right now especially with the draft coming up before we get into that and more though do you guys already know make sure to elbow drop it and of course if you want to enjoy some extra sweet perk for the channel consider becoming a member to the savage club anyways climb the top rope and let's jump right into it and let's start off with some of the unfortunate news as wwe is reportedly taking over wrestlers twitch accounts over the next couple of weeks so we already discuss how WWE sent an email reminding superstars that they will have until the beginning of October, October 2nd to be specific, to end their ties with third party platforms such as Twitch. All of this came from an initial report indicating that WWE were not allowing their superstars to do business with third party platforms where they are making extra money from. It was later clarified that Twitch and YouTube accounts were fine as long as they did not use the their WWE character names. And now with the latest reports, all of this is a bit contradicting, as WWE will be taking over wrestlers' Twitch accounts within the next four weeks, and the talent will receive a percentage of the revenue that is earned, where WWE gets a cut from. On top of that, whatever these superstars are making on their Twitch account, all of that is going to count towards their downside guarantees, which is a win-win situation, but only for the WWE, not necessarily the wrestler. All of this is very frustrated to hear, and WWE just continue to feel like a gritty company that doesn't even want their superstar to succeed outside of it and make that extra revenue. This is going to affect a lot of superstars that have massive support on these platforms. A lot of people are questioning WWE actions right now and even questioning whether or not this is something that they are able to do legally. Because of course when you bring up the word independent contractor, it doesn't necessarily sound like it. It doesn't sound like that is what you are if you are a WWE superstar. We also don't know what specifically changed because the previous reports indicated that they were able to use their legal first names but now all of a sudden that's not even being mentioned almost like it doesn't even matter according to the wrestling observer radio one wwe superstar was quoted as saying this is amazing because it's really going to open up the independent contractor issue all these smart attorneys surrounding vince and this is the battle that he wants it was also noted that a lot of the talents are livid about the whole situation but as is usually the case in these situations nobody will speak up about it and them not speaking up about it probably had to do with the fact that they might end up getting punished on television or wwe might just decide to not use them as much on the weekly shows and just wait till the contract expire it's worth mentioning that wrestlers with higher downsides rely on house shows merge a third-party platform to win extra money on top of what they are contracted by wwe and the news that wwe will be seizing the money earned from these third-party party platforms will have come as a very nasty surprise especially with the fact that there is no type of house shows right now they're just trying to get that extra money from elsewhere and then that extra money that they're getting from the own superstars is the one that they're paying back on that downsize but while still even making more all of this is probably gonna get nastier within this month especially if we do get some superstars speaking out or just not necessarily trying to comply with all of this because at that point if you're making some type of money from all of these platforms then what's the point of doing it if wwe is probably gonna take a higher percentage revenue of it when you can instead not be doing it and not getting your downsize cut right now moving into some other news and discussing the latest regarding Raw Underground and Vince McMahon this past week. As you guys noticed, this past episode of Monday Night Raw did not have any Raw Underground in it, even though that segment ended up having a shriek of seven consecutive weeks. This had caused some speculation about the future of the work shoe style fighting concept. 
the Wrestling Observer Radio ended up indicating that while there was no segments on Monday's show, the word is that it is not finished yet. It was stated that the company hasn't scrapped that concept, but it was noted that all is subject to change. The wrestlers who would have been used as extra around the ring for the fight, with some of the people that tested positive in the latest outbreak for WWE. Just hours before Raw went live on the USA Network, it was reported by WrestleWoods that wrestlers didn't find out what they will be doing on the show until after 5 p.m., which meant they had just three hours to get their segment finalized. And because of that late script, it also seems like WWE just didn't have any time to do anything related to Raw Underground if they really wanted to. And not to be surprised here, but the reason why everything was finalized last minute was, of course, because of Vince McMahon. It has been indicated that Vince McMahon didn't start working with the creative team and with the crew until late afternoon, around 2 to 3 p.m. And then the show wasn't finalized until 5 p.m. But you know, even when it's finalized, WWE still tends to be changing things around. Adding to the report, it's been indicated that Vince McMahon was more inaccessible than usual at the event this week, which only makes things worse, but certainly sounds like a typical Monday, unfortunately. On to some quick news, uh, WrestleVoods ended up reporting that Sasha Banks vs. Bayley is the planned main event for the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. This will be the second time that Sasha Banks has headlined a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. She previously did that against Charlotte Flair on 2018, which was hyped as the first Hell in a Cell match featuring the women's division. This of course won't be the first time that we get a Sasha Banks vs. Bayley, but it will be the first time in a couple of years after WWE has been trying to build them off as a tag team, as best friends, as actual champions, but still being allies and now they have turned on each other. With how much WWE has built off this program, it does make sense for them to be the one to close up the show at Hell in a Cell. And into some of the latest news regarding the WWE draft, as we know that is coming up very quick already within the next two weeks, so there's said to be a lot of changes changes, including call-ups from NXT, because Vince McMahon always want to put new fresh faces on television, even though WWE creative team usually doesn't know how to book them. Anyways, with the draft coming up, it seems like Vince McMahon and Triple H relationship usually get complicated around this time, because sometimes Triple H doesn't want Vince to call up certain superstars, especially those top superstars on NXT. We saw something like this happen early on last year, where Triple H wasn't really consulted when WWE called up his four top NXT superstars. If Vince McMahon asked Triple H what he thought about calling up Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, Ricochet, and Aleister Black after the Royal Rumble last year, then Triple H might have been able to tell Vince McMahon that Tommaso Ciampa needed neck surgery, so he was gonna end up being out of action for a bit. That didn't happen, and we all know the course of the events that followed. In regards to the upcoming draft, Ringside News reports that Triple H isn't 100% out of the loop when it comes to the WWE draft, and he doesn't necessarily have zero say on it, but based on the sources, they emphasize that no one really has any say about Vince McMahon anyways. They added that the situation between Vince McMahon and Triple H was described as a complicated one, especially during this time, where you know that WWE wants to snatch up some NXT super stars to put them on Raw and SmackDown and quote unquote shake things up even though they have enough superstars in that roster already that they don't even use. I really wish that this wasn't the case. I feel like Triple H having more control especially on the draft will certainly benefit WWE greatly. It's better than calling up a guy like Ricochet or Aleister Black and then have no plans for them to the point where at this point WWE is literally trying to revive that NXT vibe that they used to have. Another big issue last time was as we said at WWE calling people up while they are in the middle of an NXT program. Simply because Vince McMahon doesn't care and he's only worried about Raw and SmackDown. Hopefully none of that end up happening in this upcoming draft and things go a bit more smooth and they put more reasoning behind these trades. Anyways guys, uh, that is all the latest that I got for you. If you enjoy or find it informative, don't forget to elbow drop it and hit those notifications to continue being up to date. I'll catch you on the next one, so stay savage.